Labas Vakras, I'm standing here in Vilnius, the heart of Lithuania and capital city. Behind me is Gediminas Tower, the main symbol of Vilnius. Lithuania is not a typical tourist destination, but I'm here to show you how to have fun on a budget and like a local. The tower is the last surviving part of Gediminas Castle. The castle itself was small but well fortified and managed to stand firm against many attacks from foreign invaders. According to legend, the founder of Vilnius, Grand Duke Gediminas, had a dream of a wolf on the hill where he had been hunting that day. He was told it represented strength and he should build a castle with a city around it. It proved to be true and in 1919, Gediminas Tower was the first place the Lithuanian flag was officially raised. Inside of the tower is a museum showing models of the castle from different ages. It also provides spectacular panoramic view of the city. From one side you can see the old town stretching all the way up to the parliament building. From the other, you can enjoy the view to the river Neris and the three most central bridges. And from the last, you can see the hill of three crosses. If you fancy a stroll, the five minute walk up a steep slope takes you to the top. Alternatively though, a funicular runs from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. all year round and until 9 p.m. during seasonal months. Journey only costs a mere euro. Whichever way you choose, this view should definitely be on your short list. Talking of viewpoints, the hidden gem in Vilnius is the Green Lakes. Slightly outside the city, it's less known to travelers. In the summertime, flocks of locals can be seen here soaking up the warm weather, sunbathing, and going for a cool swim in the lake afterwards. The Green Lakes consist of six lakes in total, but we will focus on how to get to and what activities are available at one in particular, Balsas Lake. The reason the lakes are so popular among locals is the range of activities on offer here. Sport enthusiasts can be seen training for sports, swimming long distances, kayaking around the lake, or simply the more relaxed option of beach volleyball. The lake has a spot where you can hire rowing boats, kayaks and pedal boats. Rowing boats are only 5 euros an hour and allow you to go deep into the center of the lake to take in the stunning 360 degree view. If you are brave enough, you should definitely dive in here to sample how fresh the water is. There is even a boat available for hire that has tables on it. Careful though, because you will need a good pair of legs to pedal it if there are many of you hiring it. Beers can be bought from the bar for extra fuel. On the right hand side of the lake you can find a path leading to the Tarzan swing. It's fun, it's crazy and it's always exciting. To get to the lake from the center of the city, two buses are required. From the Novotel on Gediminas Prospectas, cross the street to the square. On the left hand side of the square is Vilnius Gatwe, where you can take the bus 1G from bus stop Vinze Kudirkas Ekšte. Ride three stops until you come to the Pramagu Arena stop and change bus to the 36 or 66 here. If it's a nice day, there is a little just across the road from the bus stop, where you can gather supplies for a picnic. After 15 stops, get off at Verkerische and follow the road opposite the bus stop to the foot of the lake. 
passes in Vilnius go almost everywhere and only cost one year rapper journey. Returning back to the city, we find ourselves showing you a more unusual part of the city, the Independent Republic of Ujubis. On April Fool's Day in 1997, the inhabitants of Ujubis declared themselves independent with an army consisting of 12 men. At the time it was seen as a way of poking fun at the recently sought freedom Lithuania had acquired from the Soviet Union. The country itself still seemed like it was trying to find its own identity and the population across the river thought it would be fun to turn a small area into its own community allowing creativity to flow naturally. It is still unclear whether the Republic is actually a joke or a serious matter, but regardless, the events promoted by Ujubis are encouraged by members of Lithuanian Parliament. The state declared their own currency, president, cabinet of ministers and even their own flag, with a different one for each season. You can even go to Jupis Cafe to get your passports done by the waitress. They even wrote their own constitution with some unorthodox examples included. For example, Number 12. A dog has the right to be a dog. Number 24. Everyone has the right to understand nothing. The hilarious nature of these laws proves just how artistic and free the people of Ushubis are attempting to be. Artistry is demonstrated in every part of the Republic of Ushubis, wherever you go. The area can be entered from different sides of the old town, with the most popular entrance showing a map of how to get to all the main artwork. Some notable pieces to go see is the angel, the hidden mermaid under the bridge, and all on display in the art workshop. You can even see some boobies in the Jupis. Although Jupis is not technically a part of the city, it's still well worth a visit. Just don't forget to look under the bridge when you're coming back across the river to the city. Right underneath you'll find a swing attached to the underside of the bridge. Oh, by the way, you'll need to get your shoes wet to reach the swing because there is no other way to get to the center of the river. These amazing swings you can find in many places and there is a top secret community behind it which hangs them all around Vilnius. A great way for getting around the center of the city is a cheap city bikes for hire. With Vilnius having virtually no heels, these bikes are easy for everyday usage. Two short-term options are available to use these city bikes. You can get a 3-day subscription for €2.90 or a 30-day subscription for €3.90. This allows you to use the bikes freely for up to 30 minutes. Don't worry though, as you can easily change bikes at the same station after just a 2-minute break. There are a total of 37 stations around the city many of which are in the center. Be sure to familiarize yourself with the location of a few though as to exceed the 30-minute free beat and you'll find a service fee added to your monthly bill. A map of all the stations can be found on the Cycle City website where you can also sign up. Registration cannot be simpler. To register, go to cyclecity.lt and fill in your application form. Subscription to the service will be connected to your bank account and works with any across the world. After signing up, you'll receive your password to the email address you entered, and then you can get your bike after picking up your free cycle city card. There are places throughout the city you can get your card, but we recommend the Vilnius Public Transport Information Point, which is located directly across the road again from the Novotel in a kiosk. Every time you're going to a new city, it's always an issue to find a place where to eat at. 
streets seem endless with menu after menu and promoters standing at the doors trying to explain why their place is better than the last. We are not going to show you the best place to eat at because it's generally down to taste. We'll show you a little trick on a place where you can save some cash. Italian food is now one of the largest markets in the food industry. And in Vilnius, it is no different. There are two chain restaurants you can find throughout Vilnius, Can Can and Chili Pizza. Most of the time, both of the restaurants have special offers for many types of pizza and even more discounts for takeaways. Don't be fooled while looking at the menu of these places because the deals are often hard to find. In Can Can Pizza, you have to flick through to the middle of the menu to find them advertised. Whereas in Chili Pizza, you must ask for a separate cutout deals menu. They can sometimes be found at the front door. Pizzas here can be as cheap as 1 euro 50 and conveniently both of these restaurants are located opposite each other, a small distance up the Gediminas Perspectus. However, if you would like to try Lithuanian cuisine, there are many restaurants offering it. Varos is one of the better ones in our opinion. Potato is one of the main ingredients in Lithuanian food and you can find it in many of the dishes. Alternatively, if you can't afford it or simply aren't in the mood for dining out, there are a number of cheap supermarkets around the city. Each can be found within walking distance of each other, although there is not much difference in price. The three are Maxima, Iki and Rimi. When you will be in one of the shops, don't forget to try the best national snacks, Suris. These little sweet cheese filled snacks are so light and delicious. They're too good to be cheese and taste nothing like it. There are different flavors to choose from, with the cheapest one starting at only 11 cents. If you would like to go further into cultural food, you can buy Lithuanian cake, Shakotis. This big cake is designed in the shape of a tree and made through a very careful layering process in a special oven. This taste reminds me something like a waffle. What? After a good dinner, it's nice to go for a relaxing drink or two. There are a lot of pubs and clubs in Vilnius, but our course takes us to a smaller, lesser known pub filled with locals spending their evenings enjoying a cool national beer. Here's a Laos Namai. The place is decorated in a wooden style, giving it the cozy, homely atmosphere of traditional houses. The pub itself is special in Vilnius due to the wide range of local and imported beer on offer. Here you can find the most popular brands of Lithuanian beers ranging in price and alcohol strength. The menu is vast and has beers as low in price as 1 euro 20. They even have ales on tap here. Alongside the beer menu, you might also find the menu for food. Another traditional Lithuanian food is fried bread. It's a perfect snack to accompany a beer. You can find two types of them here, garlic and cheese and mayonnaise. In our opinion, this pub is the best place to try this traditional snack. On Friday and Saturday nights, the pub is open late until 3 a.m. and they generally have music playing. Make sure you don't get the beer labels mixed up with your friend drinking the stronger beer or you might end up having had too too many and find yourself dancing wildly along to the rock anthems they play. Alaus Nama is translated to the beer house and can be found by following the river Neris which runs parallel to Gideminas Tower. It's probably the easiest option as the pub is just by the riverside and only takes a short 15 minute walk to get there. Alternatively though, you can get there by walking up Gediminas Prospectas, turning onto the river at the Lukishko Akshte Square. Time to relax, to have a nice walk, and some relaxation, you can come to Bernadine Park. This park is especially beautiful in autumn when the leaves fall. 
However, there is a different alluring atmosphere all year round. The park is between Gedeminas Tower and Ojubis, so it's really easy to find. In the summertime, people are gathering in the center of the park for the musical fountain. In the evening, when the sun starts to go down, lights come on and colors start to change in synchronization with the fountain. This is just one example of all the water around the park. Little ponds can be found throughout and the river Vilna runs along a path from Jupus to the tower. In one corner of the park, a giant chess set can be found. Let's have some fun playing a game of chess. If there are a few pieces missing, you can grab the nearest stray Lithuanian to use as a pawn. For now, I guess I'll just use myself. During the Soviet Union's rule, the main body of the cathedral was used as a warehouse for storage. The crypts of the church were always kept intact though and contained some of the key figures of Vilna's history buried there. The crypts can be visited by booking a tour in advance. The price is 4 euro 50 per person. However, to get the tour in English, unfortunately costs an extra 20 euros. One free thing to do in the cathedral is to take part in the church's Sunday Mass. As we already said, the cathedral is the largest place of worship for all Lithuanian Catholics, and hundreds of people can be seen coming here every Sunday to sing along to the massive organ above their heads. The ceremony can be quite a spectacle. just behind the cathedral and in front of it is the main square of Vilnius. This square connects the old town with the new town. Different events take place here, which makes it the liveliest part of the city. Now that we've shown you what to do and where to go in Vilnius, how about where to stay? We'll show you a couple of cheap places around everything we've talked about so far and we'll leave it up to you whether to stay there or not. Right opposite the cathedral square we were just talking about is the Paga Hostel. This is a great location as it puts you right in the center of the tower, cathedral, Ujubis and the park. A dorm bed here starts at 12 euros per night. If this is a little pricey for your taste, right round the corner is the conveniently named hostel, Pilias 16. You can get lost here as the name of the hostel is its address and for only 6 euros a night, it might be worth the extra minutes walk. Another option we recommend is the Opera House Hostel Center. The address for this is Jane Lillevilio Gatve 4. This hostel is just off Gediminas Prospectus and almost right beside the bus stop to the lake and the kiosk you can pick up your bike cart from. Staying here will set you back 9 euros a night. Hope you enjoy your stay in Vilnius and don't forget to subscribe to our channel below to get all the tips and tricks of many more hidden cities we'll explore. 